So what we're going to talk about now is we're going to be talking about the normal and the binormal vector. And so what we want to do, let's start out in two dimensions and we'll imagine that we have a curve in two dimensions. And um, at any point along that curve, we can draw a tangent line, right? Take the derivative, we get the slope of the tangent line and that point, you can draw a tangent line. So like imagine that I'm up the kind of, you know, cresting here and I draw the tangent line. Let's say the tangent line moves, you know, in, in basically this direction. Now, what I want to do with that tangent line is I want to imagine that I'm going to draw a perpendicular vector, okay? A perpendicular vector, I can either draw that perpendicular vector, you know, kind of pointing downward, or I can have it pointing upward, either way, and it's drawn at a 90 degree angle, right? So for any tangent line, I can draw a perpendicular vector. We call that vector the normal, okay? It's the normal vector, and the normal vector we're going to generate it as a unit normal, meaning that we're going to make it of length one. Okay, so we're going to have tangent line, and then we'll have a normal vector, which is going to be of length 1. Okay, and I'll draw a picture of that in just a moment. Now, let's imagine that we're going in three dimensions. So now I'm moving kind of in three dimensions, and I find myself, I have a tangent vector, and say like that tangent vector is kind of going, going in this direction. I know it's two-dimensional here too, but let's just imagine it's kind of going in that direction. And now what we can do is we can draw a normal to that vector as well. Okay, we can draw a normal vector, that is, is an orthogonal vector to our tangent vector, okay? And that'll be normal, we can make it unit, right? Then making it uh, um, a length one, and that works too. Now here's the thing, we're in three dimensions. So if you kind of imagine, you've got your three-dimensional axis, we've got the um, we've got the, the x-axis, which is kind of moving in this direction, we've got the y-axis here, and then we've got the z-axis. So that's three um, three vectors, if you want to think about them as vectors, or three axes, and they're orthogonal to each other. So, if you think about it, in three dimensions, we don't have to have just one perpendicular vector. We can actually have two perpendicular vectors. So what we'll do is we've got our tangent line, okay, and then we've got our um, normal vector, which is going to go perpendicular, or maybe it moves inward, perpendicular, okay, and then perpendicular to both of those. If we took the cross product of the two of those, if you think about this, right, remember, when we take the cross product, we get an orthogonal vector. If we take a cross product of that tangent vector and the normal vector, we get another vector. Imagine that it's kind of like, you know, going in that direction, orthogonal, okay, whatever. You gotta just kind of imagine it's at 90 degree angle to both of them. That third vector is called a binormal, okay? So that's the binormal vector. So in two dimensions, we can have two perpendicular vectors, one being the tangent vector, tangent to the curve, and then the normal, which is running perpendicular to that tangent line, all right? And then the, in the three dimensions, what we can have is we can have the tangent line, okay, which is actually running in the same direction as the curve. We can have the normal vector at that particular point, which is running perpendicular to the tangent line, or perpendicular really to the curve. And then we can have a binormal, which is perpendicular to both of those. Okay, that is perpendicular to the curve and perpendicular to the normal in three dimensions. If you kind of think about it, those three vectors in three dimensions are gonna kind of define a direction or what movement in space is happening with that particular curve at any point in time. And same thing if we think in two dimensions, we've got that tangent line, which kind of gives us a direction, and then we have that normal, which is, represents the perpendicular, okay? So let's take a look at this, let's draw it and kind of see if we can kind of figure through, and then we're gonna define it Actually finding both of these, not such a terrible thing. You probably can think about how we're gonna do that already. So to help us draw pictures now, let's take a look. Well, let's imagine we've got in two dimensions, we've got something in the R2, okay? In two dimensions, and we'll take this point here. We'll call it, uh, you know, what, x1, y, x0, y0. And we'll imagine that we have a tangent vector to the line at that point. And then you can imagine that we can draw a normal vector Okay, a vector perpendicular to that line, right at that point, okay? So on the one hand, this is T, big T of T, and this one here is N, and that's how we're gonna annotate the normal vector, we're gonna call it N. Now, let's imagine that what we do now is we, we draw in three dimensions, okay? And so our curve is kinda doing one of these things, let's say, does something like that. We draw our tangent line to the curve, Okay, so there's T. Then we can imagine that that tangent line, what we could have is we could have, say for example, here's the normal. There's N, the normal vector. 
And then you kind of imagine here is the binormal, which is perpendicular to there and perpendicular here. Okay, and so there's the binormal, which we're going to actually define as b. Okay, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about these vectors that we're looking at, the normal and the binormal. You've got the tangent line vector or the unit tangent. Okay, again, length of one. We've got a unit normal, which is also length of one. And it turns out that if we generate the tangent, the unit tangent, we got the uh, the unit normal. We're going to generate a unit vector called the binormal by taking its pro cross product, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. So, our tangent vector, t of t, we've already, already learned is going to be r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. All right, makes sense. It's a tangent vector, so consequently, it's going to be the derivative of our primary vector valued function. Now, remember that what we found out before, what we discovered before, was is that if we, if we have a unit vector, okay, then the derivative of that unit vector, or the derivative of a constantly valued uh, vector with a a magnitude of co uh, a constant value is going to in fact have its derivative be orthogonal to it okay so basically like the sh short of that is is that the derivative of t of t t prime of t is in fact going to be orthogonal to t of t because t of t is unit length okay and we talked about that a bit uh, before so what we get here is that we're going to get that our normal vector and this kind of makes sense n n of t is going to equal t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. Okay, so basically it's going to be unit normal as well. And then our binormal vector, and this makes sense as well if you kind of think about it, remember that if we take the cross product of two vectors, then the cross product of those two vectors is actually orthogonal to those two vectors. Okay, so b of t is going to end up equaling t of t cross n of t. So we got t of t cross n of t. Now, it actually makes a lot of sense why b of t, we're gonna prove here that in fact b of t is going to be unit length, all right? So if you remember, we know that the cross product of two vectors, so the cross product, excuse me, the cross product t of t cross n of t, we'll take those two vectors, and we know that their magnitude is gonna equal the magnitude of t times the magnitude of n. Right? And these are both n of t and t of t times the sine of theta. All right, we had that. That's early on. That was early on in um, in chapter two. Okay, so we saw that before. Now, because t and n are orthogonal, okay, the angle theta for between n or between t and n is going to equal pi over two. Okay, makes sense. So that means actually that if we take the magnitude of the cross product for t of t and n of t, it's gonna end up equaling the magnitude of t times the magnitude of n, and then times the magnitude of sine of pi over two, so times one, which just is equal to the magnitude of t times the magnitude of n. Now, the magnitude of t is one because t is a unit vector and the magnitude of n is one, okay? So this ends up equaling one times one, which equals one. So this vector here, that's the binormal. So that means that the magnitude of the binormal vector equals one. And so consequently what we have here is we have three vectors, the tangent vector, the normal vector, and the binormal vector that are all orthogonal to each other in three dimensions. Remember that if you're working in two dimensions, you're not gonna have a binormal because you're only gonna have two perpendicular, you can only have two perpendicular vectors, only two dimensions. So no binormal in two dimensions. And that in fact gives us our definition for how we find the tangent vector, the normal vector, and the binormal vector. So let's take a look at um, an example here. And so we're gonna find the principal normal vector, all right, and that's n. So just to know that the n is gonna be that principal normal vector, that's the one that we're gonna be finding. And then the binormal vector for, we'll have this three-dimensional vector-valued function, 6t plus 2i plus 5t squared j minus 8tk, okay? So 
What we'll get here is we're first going to have to find the tangent value, the tangent function. So t of t is going to end up equaling, it'll end up being 6 and then 10t and negative 8. Okay, right? There's your function. And what we'll do then is we're going to take, uh, actually we're going to, t of t is going to end up equaling this, divided by the square root, because we've got to take the magnitude of that, divided by the square root of, this will be 36 plus 100t squared plus 64. Okay, which is essentially 6, 10t, negative 8, divided by, and this is 100 plus 100, t, uh, 100 plus t squared, so it's actually going to end up being 10 times the square root of 1 plus t squared. Okay, and there is t. Now we'll have to find the normal. Okay, the normal is going to be, end up being the second derivative. Okay, so let's just actually take this. It's, uh, it's going to equal t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. So it'll end up equaling, we're gonna have this, we're gonna have um, six divided by 10 times, uh, times the square root of one plus t squared, comma, 10 t, so we'll have 10 t divided by 10, so this is just gonna end up being t divided by one plus t squared, and then negative eight divided by 10 to the square root of one plus t squared. So let's just change that to negative four over five root one plus t squared. And we'll make this one just three over five times the square root of one plus t squared. Okay, all divided by, um, well, we're gonna have to take this prime divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. Okay, so we're gonna have to find the derivative here and then we'll take the magnitude of that derivative. Okay, so take a minute to do that. Go ahead and pause for a second. We'll take a minute. When we take our derivative, this is what we get for the, the derivative here. We're gonna get negative three t over um, five times one plus t squared to the three halves, just using the quotient rule. One over one plus t squared to the three halves and four t over five times one plus t squared to the three halves. And then we're gonna divide that through by its magnitude. Okay, so we're gonna go out and we're gonna find its magnitude. So we'll just give it a second. Go ahead and pause for a second, we'll go find that. This will end up being, right, just, it's gonna end up being the square root of negative three t divided by five times one plus t squared to the three halves squared plus one over one plus t squared to the three halves squared plus four over five times one plus t squared to the three halves squared. Okay, which will basically take you to, right, we're gonna have the top vector, that's gonna be t prime of t, okay, divided by, um, and then we're gonna have the square root of, this will end up being nine t squared, okay, over five, or over, excuse me, over 25, times one plus t squared cubed plus one over one plus t squared cubed plus, um, and this was, remember this is four t, excuse me, plus 16 t squared divided by 25 times one plus t squared cubed. Okay, so a little bit of quick algebra, we should be able to actually get um, that value. So when we actually go through and we do that, what you should end up getting is just one over one plus t squared. Okay, did a little side work here. All right, just one over one plus t squared. And so what we need to do is we now need to go in and basically what that means is you're gonna multiply one plus t squared times this vector up here, times t prime of t. Okay, and if we did that, that would actually just change each one of the one plus t squareds into a, to a one half. All right, so this gives me, it's gonna end up equaling negative three t over five times one plus t squared to the one half. And then we'll get one over one plus t squared, excuse me, t squared to the one half. And negative four 
oh, excuse me, this is negative three, this is positive four over five times one plus t squared to the one half. And that is my normal vector n. Yeah, a little gross, but what are you gonna do, okay? At a certain point, you could actually just plug in the value for t and you end up getting the normal at that point, which is really kind of cool, all right? Now, we'll find the binormal so remember the binomial of t is gonna end up equaling, it's the cross product of t cross with n. And so let's take a look at this. That's gonna end up being equal to, go back up here to t. t was this thing here. So it was three over five. Oh, excuse me. Um, it was, yep, three over five. times one plus t squared to the one half, and then t over one plus t squared to the one half, and negative four over, negative four over five times one plus t squared to the one half. And that was t. And we'll cross that with then this vector here. So negative three t over five times one plus t squared to the one half, one over one plus t squared to the one half, and four over five times one plus t squared to the one half. I, J, K, okay? So this is gonna end up being three over five times one plus t squared to the one half. This will be t over one plus t squared to the one half. This would be negative four over five times one plus t squared to the one half. Then negative three t over five times one plus t squared to the one half. One over one plus t squared to the one half. And four over five times one plus t squared to the one half. So go ahead and pause for a second and then we'll go find what that cross product is. I forgot a T. There's that T right there. So what I've got here is you can actually see, okay, um, we went in, just took our cross product, and actually it turns out that your jth, your jth uh, portion uh, becomes a zero. And we end up with, at the end of this, we're gonna end up with four fifths I minus zero J plus three fifths K. Okay, and that should be your complete binormal vector. We can write that actually the binormal here as equal to four fifths, zero three-fifths and there is our binormal okay so the process is a little tedious let's uh let's write out all three of them i'll write out all three of them for you so our tangent vector is going to end up being here three over five times one plus t squared and this should be to the one half t over one plus t squared to the one half four over five times one plus t squared to the one half our normal vector is then gonna be negative three t over five times one plus t squared to the one half, one over one plus t squared to the one half, and four t over five times one plus t squared to the one half. And then finally, our binormal is gonna be just four fifths, zero, three fifths. And there we go, and there's our binormal, okay? And so those are our three vectors that kind of help us to define the position or location of a particular point on a curve. Very cool. Just to remind you, for our formulas, okay, as a review, we've got that the tangent vector is going to be the vector valued function, its derivative divided by the magnitude of the vector valued function, its unit, so that should kind of like look like that. The normal vector is then gonna be the derivative of the tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the tangent vector, uh, divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the tangent vector, excuse me, and the binormal is gonna be the cross product of the tangent vector and the normal vector, all right? That completes this, uh, this portion of um, our work on curvatures, the normal and the binormal.